answer the prayer, amen, that you put before him. That is amazing about how God works, amen. It, it doesn't come, amen, sometimes when we want it to come, amen. But God, you can hold the assurance, amen, if it didn't come today, amen, I can look forward to tomorrow. And if tomorrow comes, he's still the same God, amen, and he's still moving, amen, and he's still going to supply my need, amen. Hallelujah. That's the kind of attitude and the mentality that we should have, amen, not to question, amen, why it didn't come at 3 o'clock. Just know, amen, that it's going to come and it's on its way. Praise God. Just thank him anyway. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I just thank God for his goodness and his greatness. Amen. But when we go on a little bit further here, we find that in searching the scriptures here, Elijah prophesied. Amen. No dew or rain, only until he said so. The prophet Elijah boldly stood before King Ahab and delivered a message declaring the judgment of God was going to fall upon Israel. You know, that's one thing. Elijah was a man like anybody else. But the thing was, was that he had enough confidence in God that he would stand before the king of that day, before King Ahab. And God put a word in Elijah to say unto the king. And Elijah was the man to speak Amen, to the king, and he wasn't going to back down. Amen, but God had told him, and he obeyed the voice of God and spoke the word to Ahab. In modern society, standing before a world leader, expressing your opinion without fear or retribution seems reasonable. In the days of Elijah, a strongly worded opinion to the ruler of the land could bring swift and brutal punishment, even death. Elijah had the task of telling King Ahab that his nation would suffer from drought, seeing no rain or dew for the foreseeable future. Knowing the king's heart, God gave Elijah personal directions to flee the area after giving the message to the king. Not only did God give Elijah an opportunity to avoid the wrath of Ahab, but God sent Elijah to a place where he would find protection and provision. The mission, amen, must have been difficult for Elijah, but... His obedience to God gave him the courage to go forward, not backward, not to the left or right, but to go forward and complete the difficult task that had been given him. God told Elijah to go. Elijah could have just stood there, sat there in the muddy grubs or whatever and been like, Lord, I don't know. Why do you want me to go here? You know, or he could have been afraid to speak to King Ahab in the first place. They could have just been, you know, all nervous, you know, and just all shaky. Lord, I don't, I don't know what to say. But he was not like that, or at least I would like to think that he was not like that. That he just boldly proclaimed the word of God unto him. Hey, you know, King Ahab, the Lord said, I mean, it's not going to rain until I say so. <laughs> You know, it would imagine what kind of thoughts may have went through King Ahab's mind. You know, it's just like, you know, what? It ain't going to rain. You know, it could have been for a few days. I mean, it could have been, it was for, I believe, three and a half years before it ever rained. Hallelujah. God had a reason and for a purpose. Just as God has a reason and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. I mean, if you're at home or wherever you are, I mean, God has a reason and a, for, and a purpose for your life. Amen. It's just whether or not we're going to be obedient to his word and step out into his word and do what his word tells us to do. No matter what, what you know, uh, what, what the circumstances or, you know, look at, well, you know, what if this, what if that, or whatever the case may be. But we do it because we have that trust and confidence in God to know that he's there. Amen. He told us to do it so we obey his voice. But as we go on a little bit further, we find that sometimes God gives an unpopular word. <laughs> how, how many times have you come to church and, and, and Pastor Thomas or Brother Watson, uh, you know, or different ones have come up here and, they, and they've spoken, amen, behind this pulpit. And you've heard the word of God go forth, teaching, whatever the case, preaching, amen. And, and, and you hear the word of God go forth and you're kind of like, uh uh no mm 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 no oh. you know because he's getting on your toes amen <laughs> I could say that <laughs> praise God you know I've been in the, I've been in service amen Pastor Thomas preach amen the word of God and I know 
that he sought God for the word and the word and God had put that word because he knew I mean if it wasn't for anybody else it was for me I mean to hear the word of God and it may have it, it, you know and I may have felt like it just stomped all over my feet but it was for a reason and for a purpose that it came forth it might not have seemed popular at the moment I might not have sat there with all smiles and grins on my face amen but later on Amen. As God began to deal with my mind and my heart, then I began to think about the word. Amen. What word came forth and God just keeps, he keeps pushing. Amen. He keeps bringing it back to your remembrance. Amen. And you begin to think about it. Then you begin to wake up and realize, okay, okay, God. Amen. I need to go. <laughs> when I mean go, amen, there was a time, amen, I, I don't go into detail. The pastor Thomas preaching the word, amen, he got on my toes, amen, I felt so bad inside, amen, and so I went to Pastor Thomas and I told him, amen, he probably had no clue what I was even talking about, but it was because that God dealt with me, amen, God needed to deal with me, but he did it through the man of God that he placed over our lives. Amen. And I'm thankful for the man of God that he's placed into our lives. Ain't you thankful? Amen. For our pastor. Amen. Ain't you thankful? Amen. For Sister Thomas. Amen. The pastor and his wife. Amen. That God has put us into this place. Amen. But I went to him and I told him. I said, Pastor Thomas, I'm supposed to say I apologize to you. <laughs> you know, he probably thought, what are you talking about? Amen. But you know, the thing is, I knew that God was dealing with my heart. Amen. And I couldn't hold it any longer. I had to talk to him. Praise be to God. I mean, that's what God does. When God's word comes forth, it might not be popular at the moment. But I want to tell you, it may even involve weeping for a moment. <laughs> but joy cometh in the morning. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Because God's speaking directly to you for a reason, for a purpose. All right. So as we continue further, Jonah received an unpopular word from God. God commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell the people to repent or face his wrath. You know, that would have been hard to do, you know, in a sense. You know, Jonah, you know, like, Jonah, I need you to go down to Nineveh. And you need to preach repentance. And you need to tell them that, you know, I'm going to bring destruction. And then so Jonah's like, you know, uh, I don't know these people. You know, you know, maybe I've never been to Nineveh, Lord. You know, whatever the case may have been. But, you know, the thing was, was that God had told him to bring a word to this place, this city. And instead of obeying the word of God in his voice, he decided to run. Has anybody ever run? Amen. Hallelujah. This old boy ran. But I'm thankful he welcomed me home. Hallelujah. With open arms. Praise God. Hallelujah. So but that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. This word did not set well with Jonah as there was a contentious history between Israel and Nineveh. Instead of going to Nineveh as directed, Jonah went to Joppa. And boarded a ship sailing for Tarshish. Or Tarshish? <laughs> That's a hard word to say. <laughs> Amen. Just, well, anyways, yeah. A storm arose which caused the ship and crew to be in peril. When Jonah confessed his responsibility, the crew tossed Jonah overboard into the sea. Jonah was swallowed by a great fish where he spent the next three days and nights. Once Jonah was delivered from the fish, he went straight to Nineveh. And completed the task God originally given to him. Ain't that amazing what God does to wake you up? <laughs> he put Jonah. When I went, now, God did that to Jonah yesterday. Could, Jonah, could God do that today for you? Yes, he could. Why? Because God's love for you. And he's willing to do anything, amen, to make sure, amen, that he can try to... to to, to put you back into his loving arms. Praise God. Whatever he can do to change you up, shake you up, amen. Turn you upside down, shake you, amen. He'll do it because of his love, because somebody's praying for you, amen. So but as we read on, so the ship got shaken up. He got out. He got in a, a big old uh, uh, great fish had swallowed him up, got, probably got tired of him and spit him out. But as we read on, we find that Elijah was far more obedient than Jonah. However, this did not make his task any easier. Now, there are times when as individuals or as the collective body of Christ, we do receive an unpopular word from God, it may seem. But sometimes the word of God that comes from the pulpit of, you know, here at the church may not seem like it's popular. In Jonah chapter 4, we see the prophet proclaiming his discontent with the task God had given him. 
Eventually, he submitted to the authority of God and obeyed, just as Elijah had obeyed God. Just imagine, what if Jonah would have done the same, had the same kind of attitude, if he would, as Elijah had? And then he, God spoke to him, and then, and, then God, you know, and then Jonah was like, yes, Lord, I'll go. You know. But we know what happened. He had to be shaken up a little bit. <laughs> shaken in the boat. And no doubt shaking in a stinky fish. Amen. And to come out, I mean, the look on his face probably. Amen. I bet you he ran like, well, <laughs> it's in telling how, how fast he probably ran to get to Nineveh. Because he realized, amen, there was a word that needed to be spoken. But as we begin to, I, w- I want to say this question here. How do you handle an unpopular word from God? With compliance or disregard. So the times that you come to the house of God and, and you may feel like, well, you know, that was, you know, and it didn't sit well with you because he got on your toes. It's not so much the preacher got on your toes. God's getting your attention. <laughs> so did you just try to throw it away? Or did, you, or did you comply with the word that God had sent forth to provide to you? So, but in Elijah... At the brook Cherith, the expression God works in mysterious ways is applicable to Elijah's situation. Why would the God, or why would the God of all things tell his prophet to go and hide by a small creek? You know, could have told him, say, you know, go down to Lower Lake. Or, you know, or, or, you know, go over here to the uh, Mediterranean Sea or something like that, or whatever the case was, you know. Uh, but, you know, he told him just to go by the by this brook called Cherith. It was for a reason, for a purpose. Certainly God could destroy or vanquish anyone who stood against his chosen prophet. This situation demonstrates how God operates with divine understanding. The word Elijah received was to tell Ahab about the impending judgment and then hide at the brook Cherith. Elijah did not question God. He simply complied with the directive he was given by the creator hallelujah he wasn't going to question it he just knew that god said it i gotta go (laughs) praise god so as we read on a little bit further we find that ravens fed him now god could have sent bears (laughs) you know that would be cool he could have sent lions (laughs) i mean you know god couldn't have done anything Is there anything too hard for God that he cannot do? There's nothing too hard for him. Amen. God could have sent eagles. He could have done anything, you know. I mean, when you really think about it. But there's a reason why God does what he does. He gets the glory out of it. And it's for a reason, for a purpose. So there's a reason why he went to this particular brook called Cherith. And there's a reason why that ravens were sent to feed him. The irony is thick when looking at the choice God made in the way that he would feed Elijah. The raven has long been associated with darkness or evil doings. Many stories and poems have been written using the raven as a symbol of evil or darkness. You know, most uh, famous in modern times, the poem of the raven by the A- Edward, or uh, not Edward, but <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe. It portrays a raven talking to a man uh, distraught at the loss of his love and grappling for sanity. Even more ironic in the case of Elijah is that wild animals or wild birds in this case approached a human being to bring him food. Birds are always skittish around humans and other creatures that approach them. And rarely do they feel comfortable approaching humans. It's usually the other way around, right? (laughs) You know, it would have been like Elijah going to the brook with some crumbs in his hands, feeding some ducks or something like that, you know. But it was the other way around. The Bible does not give many details on what happened to Elijah during his stay at the brook Cherith, only that he was fed by the ravens. You know, and that's the thing. You know, Elijah, you know, God told Elijah, you need to go down to this brook called Cherith. So no doubt, you know, Elijah was probably like, well, I'm going to have plenty of water to drink. But did he probably ever question what am I going to eat? I don't know. I like to think probably not. Amen. Because God, he knew that God would supply. If God supplied my need before, he'll supply it today. Amen. So maybe he went with that kind of intention. Maybe he went knowing 
God's already, God's already supplied the water. He told me to go by the brook called Cherry. He could have told me to go out in some desert land. But God already supplied me for my thirst. So then I know that he's going to supply my need for my hunger. You know, and so I would like to think that he thought that way. But as we read on, we find that the Bible does not give many details of what happened to Elijah during his stay at the brook Cherry. Only that he was fed by the ravens. Imagine if someone had come across a prophet during his stay at the brook. What would this person have uh, you know, witnessed? Elijah was healthy and vibrant during a time of drought and famine. Even more amazing were the ravens bringing him food. A person who saw ravens as evil creatures might be overcome with fear seeing them you know, freely approaching and bringing food to his prophet. That vision alone could have caused men to stay away for the fear uh, of, of, the, uh, you know, of the ravens. Uh, but with this in mind, we can see some logic in why God would have used this method to care for the man. Not only was he supplying his need, but he was also protecting him at the same time. Amen. That's what God does for his people. Amen. Not only does he feed you, not only does he take care of you, not only does he give you a place to stay, a roof over your head. Amen. But he supplies all your needs. Amen. Both physically, spiritually, to be able to make it. Amen. Not only to make it for yourself, amen, but so that you can make it for somebody else in a sense that you are in the, 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 the place, amen, to help somebody lift up their hands. Praise God. But as we go on a little bit further, we find that the Lord takes care of those who don't trust in him. No. But the Lord takes care of those who trust in him. Psalm 62 and 8 says that to tr it says, uh, trust in the Lord at, at all times. Ye people. So that, that means you got to trust in God when everything all around you is going great. That's to trust in God when everything is falling apart. That's trusting in God when it seems like, you know, you just don't know where to turn. But to know that he's right there with you. Amen. That, that he's going to make, he's going to supply the need. That he's going he's gonna to be there. All you need to do is just open your mouth and just begin to talk to him and ask him. Amen. So as we read on, we find that, you know, Elijah had good reason to trust in the Lord. Not only that the Lord had given Elijah direction to hide, but he gave Elijah safe passage and supplied his needs. Further study of the prophet provides numerous examples of the awesome power of God. Elijah was no different than any other human being. He simply obeyed and trusted, obeyed and trusted in the Lord. Only when we trust in God can we be witness to greater miracles. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Only when we can trust in him. No, I mean trust. What is trust? <laughs> but trust, trusting in God, knowing Amen, that he's a God that does not fail. Our trust in God must grow beyond all human reasoning. We got to we got to go outside our, our mind in a sense. You know, we've got to look beyond. You know, that's the thing about God has given us the physical eyesight. But God has also allowed us the opportunity by faith, amen, to see further, amen, than we could ever imagine to be able to see. Amen, beyond the mountains, beyond our circumstances, beyond the storms that are raging in our lives. God has gave us the ability to look beyond that and see victory, amen, see peace. See strength. Praise God. So, but we, so as we find out here, amen, we, we, our trust goes, grows as our relationship with the Lord develops into something more than just the occasional prayer. Amen. So, you know, a plant, you know, we, we were trying to plant some plants. And, uh, well, we had this, uh, <laughs> so, so we had different kinds of plants. We had a whole bunch of uh, banana peppers. We thought, oh, man, these things can't wait. To the, I mean, it's like we had a, you know, we just had this massive thing of banana peppers. And, was, and they look so pretty. And then we leave. It gets cold. We cover them over. Come back, and they, they just begin to fall over. We had another, and we had a tomato plant. It was thriving. It was looking great. <laughs> and then... And then it just started to die out, and it died. Then we had another tomato plant, and then, you know, it was like, 
Well, that one's dying too. It's like, oh my gosh, we got all these plants. We, we, was, we was so excited. We was ready for a big, huge harvest, you know, of tomatoes and all those things. And, and uh, so this one was falling apart too. But when we began to, to take care of it a little bit more, and then what looked to see as it was died, it came back to life. And it's growing back up from the bottom, from the roots, and it's growing back out. That's just amazing how God does things. Amen. How, how that in our lives, we may feel like that we're dead, in a sense that we're dead spiritually, but God is there to water somebody in here. Amen. To talk a word, give a word to somebody else. You're watering it. Amen. You're encouraging somebody else by a word of faith. Amen. And God helps that person grow. What might seem to be dead, amen, begins to have life come back within them. Amen. God is able to do anything. Amen. As long as we put our trust and our confidence in him and know that he is able Amen. Now he is able. You know, that word, that scripture, we read it all the time when we heard it said all the time now unto him that is able. And sometimes we see he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could think or ask. But when you read the scripture, it says now unto him that is able. That means now unto him that is able. Don't worry about tomorrow. Now unto him that is able. He's able right now. Amen. He is able right now. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we're not promised tomorrow, but he's, he's able now. Amen. To meet my need. He's able now. Amen. To move for me. Amen. He's, na- he's able now to move for you in whatever situation that you're going through. Amen. He is able. Amen. Because his word also says that he's a present help in the time of trouble. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Amen. He's a God of yesterday, today. Amen. He's a God of the past, the present, and the future. And holds all things in his hands. Praise the Lord. Yeah, this book, I'm going to have to stretch this book out a little bit further. I get to, you know, and then all of a sudden these pages get to flipping. And then, but thank the Lord. Amen. He makes a way for me to find my place. (laughs) God's, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) God's great, is he not? Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. But as we read on a little bit further, we find that David is another good example of a man who trusted God. We see the divine hand of the Lord protecting and providing for David. Each miraculous event in the life of David was greater than the last. These demonstrated how God prepared David for greater challenges and how David was growing in his trust in God. That's the thing. God, you know, what would we be? You know, like we play, I know I'm talking about plants, <laughs> but I, we'd gotten some uh, green onions from Lowe's and went to plant them, you know, and it was like, these, I read about them now. They're really easy to take care of. So they didn't really need a whole lot of uh, tender care. Uh, so that I thought, this is my kind of plant. <laughs> so she went out and she made the little holes for me to put the plant. I had the seeds. I, I didn't even count how many seeds. I just, you know. <laughs> So, but, you know, and, but now just seeing them sprout up, you know, it, it is tr- truly amazing. But, you know, it, it's the thing is, is that what would it be if I put the seeds in there? Nothing ever did come forth. But, you know, man, you know, that goes for anything. You know, God doesn't want us to stay right where we are. God wants you to go a little bit deeper. God doesn't want you to stay content. Amen, we're just serving God. We're just coming to church. But God wants you to go a little bit further. God wants you to stretch your wings a little bit wider. Amen, God wants you to, sometimes our feathers might get ruffled and things like that, but God, it's in the process of God moving in your life. God molding you and making you and shaping you because his word says that he's the potter and we're the clay in his hand. So he's molding you. He's making you, amen, into his image, into his likeness, amen, so that you can be that true reflection of him. No matter whether you're in the house of God or whether you're at home, amen, whether you're on a, at a gathering of a barbecue, 
you, amen, or whether you're in Walmart or wherever you're at on your job, amen, that's what God does, amen, he, he wants you to grow, amen, in him so that you can, your relationship, amen, because he wants to take you to another level, if you will, he wants to take you deeper, amen, there's things in God that we have never, amen, begin to imagine, but we can see it, amen, if we'll just grow in him and just spend more time allowing him to work with us. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not, you know, none of us, amen, are, are, are to, a, to a realm that we're, we're, we're just like, you know, in the seventh heaven or something like that. Amen. But I want to get there. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want God to take me further in him. So as we read on a little bit further, we find here that, you know, the word of God tells us, you know, in regards to David. And, you know, David fought a, a bear and a lion. I mean, you know, and, and he took him down. And then... But God was preparing him for the next step in his life, for Goliath, you know. And that was the thing. David knew that God made a way, amen, for that, amen. And if God did that, amen, then this, this giant, amen, is no different. Amen, God made a way for that. God's going to make a way now, amen, because God, you know, that's the way God does. And, and the thing is, is that David had that mentality, you know, it's like, you know, this to go out there, pick up five stones and a sling, amen, and went chasing towards this big old giant, amen, he wasn't worried, amen, he had his trust in God, he had his confidence in God, he knew that if God did it before, God will do it again, amen, and it's the same thing with us here today, amen, if God moved in your life before, you can hold the assurance that God's going to do it again, wow, because that's the kind of God that we serve, amen, he doesn't fail, he doesn't give up, amen, he never throws in the towel, amen, he never calls it quits, Amen. But he's always moving. He's wanting to push you, amen, a little bit further. Amen. He's wanting to take you a little bit deeper into him. Amen. Hallelujah. But we can rest assured, amen, that I've, if I pass step one, amen, I can, I can get to step two. Amen. Step two may look like it's complicated, but I know that if I hold to his unchanging hand, hallelujah, that I know that he's right there with me by my side. Amen. If he said he'd go with me in the valley of the shadow of death, I know that he's not going to leave me. Amen. If I know that he said he'd go with me, Amen. I know that he's all around me. I just got to reach out and call out into him and reach out. Amen. And touch him. Amen. With some praise and worship and see God magnified. Amen. In my life and in your life. Amen. By just praising and worshiping him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I get excited even with Sunday school lessons. <laughs> God's wonderful, is he not? Praise the Lord. So as we go on, we find out about this widow of Zarephath. You know, when I, when I looked at the widow of Zarephath, I could not... Get it out of my mind, this thought of, I guess, Pastor Thomas talking about the, 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 the little woman, you know, because it says widow woman. I think he's told that before. But it's like when I was reading that, it's like the little, the little woman. But it says widow woman. But, but anyway, so as we read on, we find out that Elijah received a word from God commending him to leave the brook and to go to a place called Zarephath. There he would find a widow God had instructed to care for the prophet. She was a God-fearing woman based on two facts from Scripture. First, God told Elijah he had commanded a widow to take care of him. Only those in relationship with God would likely heed his voice. Secondly, when Elijah asked her for bread, she told him she did not have enough. When the prophet told her that the, wor the, the word of the Lord, she immediately left to make him bread. Her obedience demonstrated the depth of her faith. It's amazing what God will do with two sticks, a little bit of meal, and a little bit of oil. <laughs> when, when you know that your mindset is, me and my son are going to die. I mean, cause all, and, and a man of God shows up on the scene that God had sent. And in your mind and in your concept, Amen. You've got the fear of death upon you because you know that you're fixing your last meal. Amen. And then the man of God comes and he's like, you know, he says, bake me a cake. You know, and it's like, well, you know, uh, we're just fixing to make our last cake, you know. And, and, but he tells him, and then, but he begins to speak the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And something began to change in that woman. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe it was the word that, that, that Elijah, it was that assurance because it was the word. I mean, it was that assurance, I mean, that she, that, that Elijah had gave her. I mean, make me uh, a cake first and you're never going to run out. 
Hallelujah. So she took, amen, and made him a cake first. I mean, God, amen, obey, you know, God had fulfilled his word. Amen. And the thing about it is, amen, it doesn't matter what you may have. You may be running dry. Amen. You might feel like you just can't go on. Amen. But what I want to encourage you today and by just reading about this woman and Elijah, when all hopes may seem like it's lost, you can rest assured, amen, that from the word of God, there is hope, amen, in this world, amen, with all the things that are going on in this world, this world may be shaken, this world may be going under, but I've got hope in Jesus, i got hope in his word, amen, and i got hope, amen, in him, amen, for I can find peace, and I can find strength I can find love amen when I feel like I'm not loved I can find love in him when I can when I can't find anything else when I look to the left or to the right one thing I know that if I can just get into his presence amen if I can just get into the throne room if you will amen then I know I can find him there hallelujah and I can be strengthened and touched by his mighty hand praise God that's the kind of God that we serve hallelujah and he is still the same Praise be to God. So as we read on a little bit further, she makes the cake. They eat it. Amen. God had already supplied the need. Elijah already knew that the supply was already going to be made. Because why? Because God already told him. Amen. That to go ahead and go. Amen. But, you know, so he already had the assurance. He didn't have to question it. He didn't have to second guess it. He went on by faith and trusted and confidence in God that he knew that God had already prepared the way. Amen. So as we read on a little bit further, we find here she further stated she had to give gather the two sticks in order to prepare the bread that we may eat it and die. That's in First Kings 17 and 12. In other words, she had enough meal to make one small morsel of bread. Then she and her son would resign themselves to die from starvation. But God wasn't going to allow that to happen. No, not this day. Amen. This was a different time. This was a different day for God was fixing to get some glory. Amen. So Elijah commanded her to make him some bread first, assuring her God would make sure her barrel would never be empty. Amen. In obedience to the word of God, she made the bread. Praise the Lord. Hesitation in the face of imminent, imminent danger or uncertainty is an instinctive human reaction. So many times, even myself, you know, how many times have we allowed ourselves and we just like, well, you know, the Lord speak to us and then we're like, eh, I don't know. I got to hear your voice again, Lord, to know that it's you. Amen. And the Lord speaks again. It's like, well, you know, uh, Lord, speak to me again. And after the 10th time, I'm, you know, and then, you know, but then God goes and he uses somebody else. Somebody that's not going to question him. Somebody that's going to move without hesitation. Somebody that says, Lord, if you, Lord, if nobody wants to be used, I want to be used. God, Lord, I want to be the person that says I will. Praise God. I mean, with that kind of mentality. I mean, that's what God looks for. Praise the Lord. So as we begin to read on, we find out here. Even like where it says fire, firefighters trained to run toward dangerous situations. Not just firefighters, police people, ambulance people, you know, different kinds of people. Amen. They, 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 they're trained for these types of things. Amen. To, to, in situations in order to overcome the instinctive fear to flee. Their training is long and, and arduous. So when the moment arises, they can perform their duties. The widow demonstrated the natural hesitation of her humanity. Yet when the word of God came forth, <laughs> that's all we need. I mean, when the word of God comes forth, that changes everything. Amen. She immediately relied on her spirituality to overcome her fear. We must work daily in prayer and study to grow our faith in God. Amen. We can't. God has gave us that measure of faith, each and every one of us. I don't know how much you got. You may, Brother Eddie back there, he may have, you know, five cups of faith. Amen. I might have just one cup of faith. But one thing I know, amen, I don't want to just settle with one cup of faith. Amen. I want to make sure, amen, that I, when I pour it out unto God, that he keeps on pouring it out into me. Amen. God, Lord Jesus, I want to take the faith that you gave me, and I want it to be exercised. I want to put it into action. I don't want my faith to set idle that God has given me. Me, but I want to be able to use that faith, amen, because faith moves God, amen, and it pleases him, amen, so I don't want to set on it, but I want to be always moving, 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord is worthy. Amen. So as we read at home, we find out, amen, that the meal and the oil never ran out. Nope. Didn't. Amen. Just like the word that had came forth. Imagine a drought and famine so severe that it would cause a widow to proclaim the impending death of herself and her son for lack of food. Elijah asked her to trust in the Lord and first make a morsel of bread for him. Then the Lord would provide an abundance of meal and oil. As First Kings 17, 15 through 16 states. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Because of her faith and obedience, God was able to perform the miracle proclaimed by his prophet. Amen. Obedience and faith. Amen. You know, it talks about, I believe it's in Samuel that says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. It's better to obey the Lord. Amen. When God speaks to you, you better have ears ready to listen. Amen. But a heart ready to perform. Amen. Exactly what God says. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith and obedience are inseparable. The Bible tells us of a man named Naaman, the powerful man with Syria, within Syria, who also happened to be a leper. Naaman heard about the prophet Elisha and was told this man of God could heal his leprosy. He journeyed to the house of Elisha only to be greeted by a messenger. In 2 Kings 5 and 10 states, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Naaman was not pleased with this situation, but he was desperate. Verse 14 explains, And went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, and according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. If Naaman had refused to obey what God had told him to do, V.I.A., the prophet, he would never have been healed of leprosy. Amen. So important to always, when you come to the house of God, have an ear ready to hear what the Spirit would have to say to you. Because you don't know what God has in store for your life. Just know, amen, that if you come with an ear ready to hear, in a heart ready to obey. Amen. God's going to do something great. God will do a miracle in your life like never before. And let's go ahead and stand all over the house here today. Praise be to God. Just so thankful that God supplies the need. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're short, tall, slim. Amen. What you look like or whatever the case may be. He's not a respecter of persons. And we know that we can put our trust and confidence in him. Amen. He's going to take care of us. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer here today. Heavenly Father. God